Management 3025, Midterm Presentation, Team No Name, Group Number 9, The VHS Seller. The summary of our presentation, our purpose of the, these episodes is to show our viewers how an inexperienced manager has to implement a strong decision-making model when managing difficult employees, how to turn a failing business into a profitable business by utilizing strategic management techniques. And how important it is to plan for the future, set objectives, and monitor the business outcomes. Setting up the VHS seller is an ill-fated VHS tape sales concept located in fictitious hipster neighborhood in the Tampa Bay area. The concept of the VHS seller was the bandwagon on the concept of vintage delivery of media, such as the resurgence of the vinyl record. The plot of the story, or the episodes. While the VHS seller was originally started as a hobby, by the privileged child of a wealthy movie director and was run for many years with massive operating loss. The owner recently decided to attempt to make the business profitable. Knowing nothing about running a profitable business himself, the owner sought the assistance of a recent business degree wielding college graduate, our main character, Gregory Wright, or Mr. Wright, that you be made aware of. What Mr. Wright lacks in real world experience, he attempts to make up for in his theoretical knowledge of management. The story follows the path of Mr. Wright's young management career as he fumbles his way through management scenarios presented by the stores to incumbent employees, Revis and Jughead. While Mr. Wright excels in the business, the accounting side of the business, and quickly whips the accounting side of the business into shape, he yet struggles with the management of Revis and Jughead. Due to their tight relationship with the owner, Mr. Wright was given specific instructions not to fire Revis and Jughead under any circumstances. The story focuses on the different managerial challenges presented by Revis and Jughead. In the be beginning, Mr. Wright's management style align more with Henry Foyle's planning, leading, organizing, and controlling theory of what it means to be a manager. This style of managing quickly fails Mr. Wright. Through the different challenges presented by Revis and Jughead, Mr. Wright's management style shifts to a focus on the human side of management as presented by Henry Mitzberg. Uh, this more humanistic approach allows Mr. Wright to get through to Revis and Jughead and manage the business as a whole more effectively. As it turns out, Mr. Wright realizes Revis and Jughead are actually a value-adding asset to the VHS seller and discovers Revis and Jughead can provide and relate it to the primary customer of the business, the hipster. Because of Mr. Wright's willingness to change and adapt to the environment he was in, he succeeds in turning a profit at the VHS seller opening future opportunities in the management world. Our customer profile. Again, as I briefly introduced Mr. Wright, he is a recent graduate of USF St. Petersburg K. Tittleman College of Business. He has a degree in business administration and lacks, but lacks real world experiences. Our two subordinates are Revis and Jughead, which really feel that it, everything is either cool or sucks. That's their whole outlook on everything, whether or not it's cool or it sucks. Our target audience, hipsters between the ages of 18 and 35 years of age.
and our team's checklist. Grades, grades on completed assignments. Our team has successfully completed milestone number one as well as milestone number two and received excellent grades of 10 out of 10 on both. Our to-do list. Our team is actively working on completing the rough drafts of the remaining episodes. We have distributed the work workload throughout the team members. We are in the progress of scheduling meeting number three this week that will either be via Skype or in person. Proceeding with episode number one. Plot of this episode, Mr. Wright realizes that he needs to implement a strong decision-making model so he can make good decisions for the business and effectively manage Rebus and Jughead. He contemplates using one of three individual decision-making models he learned about in school. Mr. Wright decides to somewhat authoritative in this episode and use a strict approach, the classical or rational model of decision making. <clears throat> Due to the pathetic attitudes and laziness of Rebus and Jughead, he believed that the seven steps of this model will whip them into shape and make them productive employees. This episode starts with Mr. Wright pulling out his old management textbook and reviewing the three models of decision making. This progresses to him making his decision and trying to enforce it to the best of his ability. We will see in this episode that he has underestimated how difficult Rebus and Jughead intend to make it for him to do that. Episode 1 started as the viewer watches Mr. Wright silently thinking about how he can manage his business and his employees effectively. He vaguely remembers the decision-making models he learned about in school after pulling out his old textbooks and brushing up on what he learned. He makes a decision and can't wait to tell his employees about it. The next part of this episode, one, is meant to take the viewers through the seven-step program of implementing the classical or rational model of decision-making. Mr. Wright explained to Rebus and Jughead that they need to be able to follow the seven steps religiously. This includes being able to identify decision situations, de develop objectives and criteria, generate, analyze, and select alternatives, implement their decisions and monitor and evaluate the results. Episode 1 comes to a close as the viewer watches all of this structure Mr. Wright wanted fall to pieces. He is deeply saddened as he realized that Rebus and Jughead proved to be too much for this model of decision making. He decides to go back to the drawing board in hopes of finding a better strategy. Proceeding with episode number two. Utilizing the strategic management process he learned during his time at USF St. Petersburg, Mr. Wright attempts to explain to Rebus and Jughead how he will be rebuilding the VHS cellar from the ground up. Mr. Wright sits Rebus and Jughead down and establishes that the general direction of the VHS cellar is to be the number one provider of top quality vintage VHS movies. Mr. Wright explains a process by which they will achieve their general direction, which will include the development of a product, the differentiation strategy, and placing a greater emphasis on marketing. Mr. Wright goes out on a limb to suggest that Regis and Jughead could be valuable assets to this marketing strategy due to their knowledge of the target market, hipsters between the ages of 18 and 35. 
Lastly, Mr. Wright informs Revis and Jughead he will conduct quarterly performance evaluations to assess their progress making strate strategic changes as needed. Thank you. He did a great job in his first formal.